just go through kind of the layers of abstraction that um, IBC has. And today we'll be focusing on kind of the foundational layer clients. And then in the next sessions, we'll just keep working our way up until we get to applications. Um, so yeah, so IBC is architected as kind of these um, different separate layers of abstraction to make things as easy as possible for applications and users. So if you see here, you know, at the top, we have applications like transfer um, that implement the ICS 26, you know, transfers ICS 20, and users really only interact with these applications. They can send transfer messages and receive tokens. Um, but these applications, which are written by, you know, application developers, they're mainly um, interacting with the highest abstraction level, which are channels in core IBC. Um, and so as an application developer, mainly you're interacting with the channels, um, figuring out how to interact with the handshakes and you know send packet, receive packet, act packet, timeout packet. Um, but you don't need to understand the layers of abstraction below. Um, so we have channels, which are for separate applications. Um, it allows a transfer application on chain A to speak to a transfer application on chain B. Connections are kind of how you connect two clients together. So it allows um, the chain A, the entire chain to connect to chain B. Um, and a channel and a connection will have many channels. Um, and clients may have many connections, um, which might be connecting to, uh, yeah, which might have different parameters. And so the clients are really the, the being heart of IBC, I would say. You know, if people ask, you know, how does IBC work? You know, I would say that IBC works by having like clients of, if two chains want to talk to each other, they both have like clients of each other on the chain. And relayers can send packets back and forth by proving inclusion of one or more messages inside of these, these like clients. Um, so yeah, um, as part of this, relayers are kind of the glue that fits communicate that uh, allows these chains to communicate. Um, so on the client side, they're in charge of first creating the client and then keeping it in sync with update clients and submitting this behavior if, if the chain on the other end tries to fork or, or do something malicious. Um, then they set up the connection handshakes and the channel handshakes and relay packets um, and acknowledgments and timeouts. Um, do people have questions about the overall diagram sketched out here? Before I dive in any further to code. No questions? Cool. So today I'll be mainly focusing in on just this part, the clients. And as part of that, I'll, I'll briefly touch in on how we verify proofs with ICS-23 and what we're actually proving is included with ICS-24. Um, so as I said, you know, the way these clients work is that a off-chain relayer will have access to the full nodes of each chain. So if this is chain A in orange, chain B in, in green, um, we submit updates to, to the chain A's like client by reading you know, the headers of full node B and submitting them to the client we have on chain A and vice versa for um, you know, chain B. We read headers from the full node and, and submit uh, these headers. Cool. Uh, so let me just dive into the code now. Um, I'll talk about how we create the client um, and keep it in sync. And then we, after that, we can talk about how we actually use that client in IBC to, to send messages around. Mm -hmm. 